<laughs> this is my shop space. Here we go. This is it. What the heck am I doing? The Rivian is just in here for effect right now. This baby is my tiny house. This is a 24 foot tiny house that I have just been waiting to start. I also ordered the frame kit from Trailer Made Trailer. I am not paid by them by any means. I just think that they are one of the best, if not the best trailers for tiny houses. And I felt like they needed a plug. I paid full price for this. I paid full price for the frame kit. I did not get any discounts for that. Again, I wanna just shout out to them because I feel like they are a really good company. These trailers are designed and made for tiny houses specifically. Obviously, I'm gonna do a whole build series on beginning to end on this thing, but you guys can see here that even the framing structure of the tiny house is crazy deep. You know, it's not just a platform. We're talking, this is like, six seven inches and the reason that is is because cold air goes underneath and you want that cold air coming up into the house so they make enough room to insulate the the bejesus out of this thing which i am going to do and we're going to talk about what insulation i'm going to use when i get there but we are many videos away from that happening and then this guy right here this is the frame kit i am super excited and it's a massive time saver i worked with their engineering team and how we did it to the the inch or even i believe it might even be like millimeter or centimeter or something like that they because they do all of this cutting on a cnc machine so this frame kit i had designed i worked out and then they put it through their software i worked with their designer to where i was going to put the windows where i was going to put the door opening we made sure that there was a mean of egress where the sleeping is going to be we worked all of those kinks out and then they cut that for me and they put it onto the trailer and then I had it shipped out here. I originally was gonna do all of this in my buddy's shop up in New Hampshire, but I just felt like me living out of that shop and also working out of there just was not a good idea and it was a recipe for disaster for my own mental health. So I went out and I said, I'm gonna find a shop space near my mom and my dad's house they're two separate homes, but they're kind of in between. So I can either stay at one or the other while I build my tiny house, while I look for land. I am officially now in the shop and I've got one year because I signed a one year lease. I've got one year to build this. I'll show an image right now on what the design of the layout that I really want to do. I'm hoping that it is going to look like a Brooklyn style loft on the inside. I'm going to get more involved into uh, JT Designs or Jared Tatcha Designs, which is um, part of my brand and part of things of moving forward. Anything that I do building wise, that's always been a dream of mine to have a shop space like this and to be building full time and have enjoying stuff and, and selling stuff online, uh, whether it's epoxy river tables or a van that I flip or maybe a tiny house in the future that I build or a container home that I maybe will do on the land that I will be hopefully purchasing in the next year. That is obviously the goal here. So if you're new to the channel, subscribe because all of those things are going to be happening in the future. Land purchase, tiny house on land. I wanna build a shop space like this uh, and hopefully it'll be all off-grid, uh, or if it's not off-grid, it'll be off-grid capable. If for people that are interested, it is 60 feet long. It is 24 feet wide. Uh, it has a 14 foot high door. And why is that important? Because the tiny house is going to be 13 feet, four inches, which is road legal for somebody like myself to drive. Uh, which actually anybody can drive. I do want to let you all know that I've never done this before. This is a learning experience for me as well as a learning experience for you. I've done very minimal framing in real life, whether it's wood timber framing or metal framing. I know how to do it. It is a, to, it's for somebody that has done a lot of framing, it's probably pretty easy for them. I haven't done a lot of framing, so I don't know what the heck I'm doing. It's a little nerve wracking, but we're going to figure it out. We're going to do this together. So. Today, we're gonna unbundle everything and we're gonna hope for the best. <laughs> it 
And then, uh, where are my plans? Where are my plans? And then I've got these plans over here. Trailer made, um, provided all these plans for, for myself. I'll kind of, uh, show you guys some good stuff. These are the instructions, the assembly instructions. Double-sided, by the way, because, you know, my dad is really nice to me, and he printed these out at work, and then he laminated them for me, so... Thank you, Pops, for doing that. So, you know, it's funny. I was just talking to my boy, Shane, and um, also a van builder. And uh, I was telling him, man, I wish that I just paid someone to do this. It was like an extra 4000 of labor just to them for them to erect the steel frame kit. And then I was like, I would have even taken it one step further to buy all the wood and have them do the whole like shell, right? and have, you know, a, you know, do all that. And then I thought about that. And I was like, you know what? It would have been really awesome and it would have been a, a, a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. But I think me doing it this way, I'm gonna feel a lot better about myself. I'm gonna be able to show all of you on how to do this. I've actually looked up other videos on how to do the framing and there's none out there. We got a lot of good stuff coming up. This is more of just an introduction to the shop space that I'm here in now and it's uh I'm gonna get some epoxy work going hopefully soon. What I just showed might have seemed a lot easier than it really was, but I'm still not done. I still got probably 30, 40% left on the pallet. Didn't wear my gloves for one maneuver, like literally moving from there to the uh, scaffolding there, and I cut my finger pretty good. So I'm gonna call it a day. I'll come back tomorrow. I got a late start today, so I'm gonna come back tomorrow. And I'm gonna finish this off. I'm not gonna whip off the glove right now because I'm pretty sure that it's got a lot of blood in there. <laughs> it's not that bad. I just nicked it pretty good on this metal. So word to the wise, when you're moving this stuff, make sure you wear some gloves. I'm an idiot. Lesson learned. All right, it's the next day now and I obviously have all of the steel framing off the tiny house, finally. This is one of the reasons why I got a massive space that I did, the 60 by 24 shop space. I have it all laid out, which is actually what they tell you to do in the instructions. Section it all off. Section one, one A, two, three, three A, four. The loft is underneath the table there. Roof one and roof one A. So it is all kind of sectioned off the way I want it to be and I can start putting the walls together. Uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna start calling around to a couple of the spray foam insulating places because I wanna spray foam the inside of this uh, because of the six plus inches of depth I have in the trailer, and that'll give me like an R35 value or R36, somewhere in there. Three quarter inch uh, like subfloor down, and the reason I need to be three quarter inch is because it says it in the notes because the steel framing actually sits on top of the subfloor and the three quarter inch has to be enough for it to, because the steel frame will come up to the wheel well and over it and then go that way. So it has to make sure to clear that so they say a minimum of three quarters of an inch. I had the intention of putting this and I still have the intention of putting this tiny house in the Northeast. Or if I do move it, it'll be maybe Pacific Northwest, maybe the desert all those places can get very, very, very cold. 
I don't know, maybe eventually I'll put it down in Florida, but right now it's going to be a Northeast home. The Northeast gets mighty cold. The Pacific Northwest, certain ports, parts of it get mighty cold. Desert gets cold. And the trailer being off the ground, a lot of cool air will go underneath that and that can go into the house. Now, I am putting, or at least I think I'm putting because I haven't heard back from them yet, but more than likely putting a radiant floor heating system into this tiny house. Uh, that will be not only the heating system, but also be the hot water system. With that being said, I will be able to radiate anyways. However, I don't want any of the heat loss getting lost going down. Plus, I don't want the cool air coming up as well. So the most efficient way of doing it is having the spray foam. It's going to cost me a little bit more. And a lot of people are like, well, spray foam, it'll actually off gas. No, it won't. Not if it's done correctly. In regards to the walls, I haven't decided yet. It'll more than likely be spray foam, but when I get there, I'll decide. That was kind of a spiel for no reason, but maybe you guys wanted to know that. I've already checked. The heater does clear to make sure that the roof won't go up high enough and won't hit my heater. Thank, thank goodness for that one. Did I go steel frame over a traditional wood frame? Well, a few different reasons. Number one, I didn't want to do all my own framing. I paid someone to just CNC cut all of this and why not just buy a frame kit to do that? A lot of people are like, well, framing's the easiest part. Yeah, it is easy if you are a framer and I'm not a framer. Could I have done the framing? Yes, I could have. In my opinion, I felt it was easier to design the structure, the outside structure, where all the windows are gonna be, et cetera, and so forth on a computer drawing, which is what I did. And then I worked with the designer from Trailer Made Trailers to do it that way. That was number one. Number two, I don't know if it's stronger, but I believe it's stronger. I don't know how true that is. I've been told that if you are going to be moving this more than a couple times during its lifetime, it is better to have a steel frame than a wooden frame. Yes, wood frame can go down rows. Of course they can. I've seen plenty of wood frame builds go down the roads on multiple times, but steel frame is just all done with you know certain connectors, blah, 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 blah. Lastly, and probably the most important is the weight. I was trying to keep the weight of this trailer or tiny house down to around 10,000 pounds, maybe 11,000. Because of the double axle, I can go up to 14,000. I get 7,000 pounds per axle. This is rated for 14,000. I won't come anywhere close to that. I am trying to get it right around 10,000 pounds. Again, this is all new to me. I haven't done a steel frame kit, so stay tuned on how I do that and I will share all of those details with all of you guys later.